The Senator from Arizona. It's uh, customary in the days before Congress adjourns, and I'm still hopeful this Congress will eventually mercifully adjourn, for members to offer farewells and testimonials to departing colleagues. I rise today to say a few words about a senator who is leaving us and whose example I esteem and friendship I have relied on for many years. Senator John Kyle and I have served the state of Arizona together for a quarter of a century since John was first elected to the other body and I to the Senate in 1986. We've worked together in this body for the last 18 years. That's a long time to get to know someone with whom you share responsibilities to the state we are honored to represent. And I've gotten to know John very well over these many years. And I can also say in all honesty that my admiration for him has grown every single day I've been privileged to serve with him. I share that admiration for John with the people of Arizona, who elected him to the Senate three times and would have, I'm sure, comfortably elected him to a fourth term had he sought re-election. Arizonans hold him in very high regard for a very obvious reason. He's been a very diligent, very effective advocate for their interests. I've observed him closely as we tended to issues that might seem arcane and unglamorous to senators from other states, but are among the most important and often the most contentious issues to Arizonans. Issues such as land exchanges and water rights settlements. I've never failed to be impressed by the qualities that John brings to these matters. His unflappable patience, his tireless work ethic, his careful attention to detail, his determination to be fair to all parties involved, and to achieve results that are in the best interests of our state of Arizona. I've tried to learn from his example, and I wish I could say I've emulated him, but regrettably, as Arizonans and my Senate colleagues can attest, I still possess a short supply of some of John's most conspicuous leadership qualities. His patience, for example, his meticulous preparation and thoroughness are, I'm sorry to say, not qualities that I'll be remembered for. But they've been indispensable to the people of our state. It's a fortunate thing for them and for me that states are represented by two senators and that Arizonans have had John Kyle here to compensate for my shortcomings. John works harder than almost any member of Congress I know. We all joke about how we're often required to vote on legislation before we've had time to read it. But it's a poorly kept secret that we rarely, if ever, read from preamble to conclusion any of the bills we consider, even if we've had a month to do so. John does, though. He reads them. When you debate with him over legislation, you better know what you're talking about. Because he does, and he's almost always better prepared than you are, not only to explain his argument, but to explain yours as well. He often writes the bills he sponsors, work that most of us almost happily rely on staff to perform. He takes his responsibilities as the author of legislation literally, rather than figuratively, as most of us do. It's hard to imagine where he finds the time to hold himself to such exacting standards of responsibility. But he does, often working late into the night after the rest of us have gone home. When he reads bills and writes them and tends personally to the concerns of his constituents. He is a senator senator. He's principled, purposeful, informed, collaborative, and able to get things done by cooperation and compromise without ever sacrificing the principles that motivate his public service. He would rather reason with opponents than insult them. He prefers accomplishments to acclaim. It's little wonder, then, why our caucus elected and re-elected him to our leadership. He has the complete confidence of every one of us. He is an easy man to trust with leadership responsibilities. He's scrupulous in his attention to his responsibilities and fair-minded in use of authority. He has strong views on issues and advocates for them effectively. But if he can't persuade some members of our caucus to agree with him, he will do all he can to defend our rights to be heard 
and have our position considered fully by the Senate. I think members on both sides of the aisle would testify to John's fairness, collegiality, and effectiveness. I think we'd all testify, too, to the credit his service has reflected on the Senate, a place we all love, but which we must admit doesn't always function as well or as congenially as we would like, a failing that has not escaped the notice of the American people. Were John the kind of politician who worried more about his press than his responsibilities to his constituents, his colleagues, and his country, I think many Americans would recognize him as the kind of senator they wish there were more of here. It's been my privilege to work with John not only on issues of unique importance to the state of Arizona, but on many of national importance. We worked together on comprehensive immigration reform in 2007. None of the sponsors of the legislation, including myself and my friend, the late Senator Kennedy, was more instrumental in forging the compromises necessary to put that bipartisan bill together or more diligent and effective in defending it in debate. I was running for, Cong for president that year and often away from the Senate. In addition to all the work John did to write the bill with Senator Kennedy and others and seek support for it in both houses, he had to assume many of my responsibilities as well. He did a better job with them than I did, and though we fell short of success, John deserves none of the blame for failure and much of the credit for making the bill as broadly bipartisan as it was, and for providing the framework for what will be the kind of compromise I hope and believe that we will get to the President's desk in the next Congress. Longevity in, con in public office isn't always that important a distinction. I've served one term more than John, and for that minor accomplishment, I'm referred to as the senior senator from Arizona. But honestly, I've always looked up to John as my senior. He's been my leader, my senior partner in much of the work we've done in Arizona, my friend, and one of the people I most look up to in this place, an example of selfless, capable, honorable public service. He's leaving the Senate, and we'll have time now to spend with his lo lovely wife, Carol, his son and daughter, and his grandchildren. He will have more time, too, to hike his beloved White Mountains. I envy him that, but I think we would all concede the Senate will miss him, and I will miss him particularly. Thank you, my friend, for your service, your example, and your friendship. It's been a privilege. I Madam President. The other senator from Arizona. Thank you, Madam President. If my colleagues would indulge me for just a moment so that I might respond, I am deeply moved. And very appreciative of the remarks of my colleague John McCain. People of Arizona have been so fortunate to be represented by really a very few remarkable people in the state's history, only 10 United States Senators. John McCain is the ninth of those Senators and is as distinguished, if not more distinguished, than any uh, who have served and represented the state of Arizona. He has set a standard for modern representation after being elected to the House of Representatives. None of the representatives from Arizona were ever the same in their representation. He came home every week, maintained very close contact with his constituents, and set a pace that no one has since uh, matched, let alone exceeded. So in many respects, John McCain has set a new standard for representation, but he didn't leave it at the state of Arizona. He is a national figure of the first magnitude, one of our great national leaders of the day. And it has been an incredible honor for me to serve with him, both in representing the people of our state, but also working on the significant issues of the day. Now, Madam President, I will confess that some of the more mirthful moments 
uh, have also occurred on some of the sojourns that Senator McCain has led abroad with our colleague Lindsey Graham, uh, sometimes uh, Senator Joseph Lieberman, and others. And uh, these occasions also uh, will bring great joy to me and my reminiscences uh, because, of course, at the end of the day, it is friendships, probably more than almost anything else, that uh, we uh, think of when we get toward the end of both career and toward the end of our life. Senator McCain uh, was far too generous in his description of my capabilities. I want to thank him, among other things, for the responsibilities that he did uh, enable me to undertake, things which as the seniors, and yes, he is senior, both in age and seniority, but the things which he has allowed me to do on behalf of the people of Arizona, even though he could have taken those responsibilities unto himself as the senior senator. But he was interested in dividing responsibilities in a way that the two of us could represent our state and our constituents really to the maximum advantage. And uh, I've always not only admired his approach and the people of Arizona, I, I would say, should be grateful for that. But it enabled me to be involved in things and to have uh, some extra responsibilities in areas that I otherwise would not have. Now, not all of these were things that Senator McCain really deeply wanted to get into, such as the water settlements that he mentioned. But nonetheless, uh, he has been enormously cooperative uh, in, on behalf of the people of Arizona in all of those endeavors. So, Madam President, as uh, as I near my, uh, uh, the, the end of my time here in the United, Senate, in the United States Senate, I have a lot of different emotions and a lot of things I'd like to express. I regret that one thing I won't be able to do is to speak on the Senate floor extolling the virtues of my colleague John McCain when he's about to leave, but I assure you and assure him that I'll do that from some other place and uh, that uh, my deep respect for him my appreciation and my gratitude for what he has said here today, uh, I will in every way try to reciprocate uh, at the time that he finally completes his service, not only to the people of the state of Arizona, but to this nation of ours, and frankly, also to so many people around the world. For me to have served with him in this body for 18 years is truly an honor, and I thank him for his comments today.